Hi YouTube FT here, I hope everyone's keeping well. This is a sort of a Yapo, but I purchased it myself. But I think it was worth showing on this video. But before we get into that, can you see what I've got back? I've got all my pipes back and they don't look worse for the wear for being on the journey they've been on. So let's get into this video and do the hot keeping. I am a shmokin. One of my eBay wins. This is a small little Zulu. It's almost a Zulu. I think it's got a bit good enough bend out on the bowl to make it a Zulu. And in it, I'm smoking, courtesy of Making Change, Mark, FNK Lancer Slices. Those of you who follow my videos will know that Mark sent me a package. Um, some of the package contained tobacco I'd ordered via Mark. And the rest of the package uh, was a bag, six bags of rather large samples of different types of tobacco. Now the reason Mark sent me those is because he's a jolly nice guy, but also he knows that the tinderbox is closed down and that I like Sherlock's Choice, which was a blend from the tinderbox. And we can't get it anymore. So the idea being that out of these six samples we're hoping there will be something there that I like as much as I did Sherlock's Choice. Um, so when I need an order I can talk to Mark and say Mark remember that sample you sent me of whatever, Lance's Slices, could you get me some please? Well at the moment I've had some Owl's Head and I have to be honest, I was smoking it in a straight pipe and halfway through the bowl I got an awful liquid taste in my mouth. It's not an aromatic owl's head, I don't believe it is. But for some reason it was creating quite a lot of gurgling towards the last quarter of the bowl. Um, and liquid was coming down the stem. So it's been suggested that I take some out of the bag, let it dry for say a couple of hours before I smoke it and try it then. But up until that point it was a nice smoke. As indeed lots of slices is, it's a very nice smoke. And we'll see how it goes, as long as it doesn't develop any of those nasty tastes or tongue burn then I'll be happy with it, it's a nice taste. But, here's the thing, this lighter, this is a Jambon, a, a Jobon, sorry, a Jobon lighter. I think I bought it from China. It's nice and heavy and weighty. While it lasted, it worked brilliantly. It's got a pipe piece at this end, uh, it's a soft flame, uh, which doesn't work anymore because this piece here doesn't spark the gas. No, the mechanism broken inside. Now I've taken this apart and something that surprised me was that the gas reservoir in here is absolutely minuscule. It's tiny and when you have the actual cigar part that does work, a light, you can see the liquid gas in here disappearing. So it's a quarter of that pipe lighter is the reservoir. That's all. The rest is just empty space and tubes. Uh, so it's no good as a pipe lighter. But it is good as a cigar lighter. So I'm going to keep that as my cigar lighter. Now I've got Zippos, as you all know, and I do like my Zippos. But you can't really call a Zippo classy. Well, I don't call a Zippo classy. So I wanted something with a bit of class behind it. I got fed up with buying these, you know, 26 quid lighters that just break down on you after six months. 
So I've got myself one of these. This is an ITL Corona Old Boy. And to start with, the packaging is superb. Nice white cardboard box. You open that up. And out comes this lovely deep blue padded front with a little ribbon pull top storage box it's a lovely little box so it it screams quality from the start then you open it and you've got a little felt pouch and inside the pouch it's the old boy now I've actually had this open before because I filled it with gas Uh, I know some of you have got old boys, but that's a all black old boy, and it's extremely heavy. Uh, and the beauty about these is that you know, they are based on older technology. The flame comes out at 45 degrees. You basically flip the lid, strike the light. No electronics in it at all. It's wonderful. Now the other thing these have, they have a built-in tamper. You draw it out until it just has a little click and then you can twist it 180 degrees and it locks in place. So you can actually tamper with the lighter. then you can basically twist this. Now this will come out, you can take it all the way out if you want and it's got a little spoon to poke piece at the end. You just slide it all the way in and it clips in. I expect that old boy is going to last me a long time compared to my other lighters. I won't put it back because I want to keep it out to use it. It also came with uh, five spare flints in a little box which are here it's got five spare flints uh, an instruction manual uh, why a lighter would need an instruction manual I don't know and a two year guarantee card which I must fill in and send back the other thing I treated to myself was not a new phone, but a new cover for my phone. This is uh, a tough cover, and it actually encases the phone in a hard plastic, and then a soft rubber mould goes over the phone. And it's uh, it's actually got flip-up covers for your earphones, which flip back and cover that up. And the same for your charging port, a flip up cover so dust and stuff won't get into it. And I don't know if those of you who have got a Samsung, this is the Galaxy S3 model. They are extremely thin phones and very slippery. Uh, so this type of case, for me, works absolutely wonderful because there's no way, it makes it a much more chunkier phone and there's no way that is slipping out of my hands. The other beauty about this is that it's actually a stand. So you can slide out this back, lock it in, and the phone will stand at an angle this way or this way. So thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe. Keep them alight. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.